Hi guys, I will explain tire contact patch from the review of tire on the hard asphalt to summary. Here I have a quiz for you. Which of the following statement is right? Number one, slip velocities are different depending on the location of tire contact patch. Number two, slip velocities are all the same over the entire tire contact patch. In the previous video, when the vehicle is rolling on the hard asphalt or concrete road, normal stress distribution shape changes from symmetric one to the asymmetric one because of damping as shown in the picture. Uh, with respect to the plane YZ, the normal stress distribution has different quantity in the leading and the following tire contact patch. Due to the rolling resistance, the resultant force F sub F over, over reading half of tire contact patch is bigger than the force F sub R over following half. Therefore, the acting line of resultant force F sub Z for a total normal stress distribution moves to the leading half of tire. This figure explains the tire contact patch behavior when the traction force is applied. As you can see here, we have a resultant force Fz, not at the center, but in the le leading half of the tire contact patch. Because of rolling resistance, as explained in the previous video, E14, roughly Reading half and the area just before the tire contact patch is compressed when the traction force is applied. And the effective rolling radius uh, gets smaller, as I explained in the previous video, E3. Shear stress tau Zx in the tire contact patch has minus sign because tire pushed the road backward. This horizontal straight line of the velocity graph represents the non-slip area of tire contact patch, which will be crystal clear in the following slide. In this area, both of wheel radius and wheel speed reach their lowest values, respectively. RT is the effective rolling radius and traction right after this constant speed area the velocity increases until the end of tire contact patch. The wheel radius is getting back to undeformed radius right after departure from tire contact patch. Green curved line represents the peripheral speed of tire. I explained this equation of longitudinal slip in the video number E3. Blue arrow shows the slip speed VSS, which is the linear speed of the corresponding point of tire contact patch. It does mean slip happens all over the entire tire contact patch. Slip doesn't happen in the constant speed area, described as NS, standing for non-slip of tire contact patch. The picture in the left side shows this area. The tire pattern of orange color shows the non-slip area. This area is decreasing when the brake or traction force is increasing because the slip is increasing in the tire contact patch. This figure explains the tire contact patch behavior when the brake force is applied roughly a leading half and the area just before the tire contact patch is stretched when the brake force is applied and the effective rolling radius gets longer as explained in the previous video number E3. Shear stress tau Zx in the tire contact patch has a plus sign because tire pushed the road forwards. This horizontal straight line of the velocity graph 
represents the non-slip area of tire contact patch, which will be clear in the following slide. In this area, both of the wheel radius and the wheel speed reach their highest value, respectively. RB is the effective rolling radius in braking. Right after this constant speed area, the velocity decreases until the end of tire contact patch. The wheel radius is getting back to the undeformed radius right after departure from tire contact patch. Green curved line represents the peripheral speed of tire. I explained this equation of longitudinal slip in the video number E3. Blue arrow shows the slip speed VSS, which is the linear speed of corresponding point of tire contact patch. As in the case of traction, the tire pattern of orange color shows the non-slip area. This area is decreasing when the brake or traction force is increasing because the slip is increasing in the tire contact patch. The answer to the quiz is number one. Slip velocities are different depending on the location of a tire contact patch. Here we have a summary. Longitudinal slip does not exist over the entire tire contact patch except for perfect slip. Slip velocities are different depending on the location of a tire contact patch. Tire contact patch is divided into two parts slip zone and non-slip zone. The wheel has the effective radius in the non-slip zone. Slip zone is increasing in proportion to the increment of traction or braking force. If you watch the previous videos, you can easily understand upcoming videos. In the previous video, E12, I explained the static stress distribution of the tire contact patch. There is also a video explaining the stiffness curve in each direction. Recently, I have explained how the reaction force applied to the tire on the road with high rigidity appears under static and dynamic road. The next video will be tire contact patch part 3. I will explain the relationship between tire contact patch, slip, and the friction coefficient. Please hit the thumbs up and catch the brand new videos by free subscription. So, what are you waiting for? See you in the next video. Goodbye, guys.